Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. There's a bunch of us that do pray for you throughout the week, every one of you. So be praying for each other. Uh, like I've said before, if you don't know everybody's names, just think about where they're sitting. Think about what they look like. God will help you with the rest. He knows everybody. He knows what they need. Amen. We have service this morning at 10, obviously, because you're all here. You know that. We have service this afternoon at 1 o'clock. It is right back in here usually. Sometimes it's out in Holy Grounds. But come back from lunch. Bring someone with you and join in. Jump in. It's great word. God's word's always great. <laughs> Our midweek is Thursday. That's at 630. So that's a live stream on Facebook. So please hook up. All of our services are on live stream Facebook. They get moved over to our YouTube channel. YouTube. Can't talk this morning. YouTube channel. <laughs> so you can go out there and check them out anytime. Be directing people to them. Go out and re-listen to them yourself. Just like scripture's living, and you read it over and over, and it can change, so can services. Listen to the messages that are out there. Listen to the, the ones that are grounded, rightly divided by the, in the word. Listen to them again and again, because things come alive to you as you grow and mature that weren't there before. So dig in. Be sending other people there. We have a, a podcast that comes out every week, usually around Tuesday or Wednesday. So keep an eye out for that. It is on Spreaker, and then also gets moved over to our YouTube page. So lots of opportunities to stay in the word, to stay undistracted from what the enemy is trying to do, <laughs> to stay focused on what God has for you and needs for you to do. Amen? All right, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Dave, and he has an offering for us. This morning we are going to do a special offering. This is over and above your tithes. Um, this is for uh, the building expenses and the rent budget, things like electric, AC, items like that. So if you'd like to give, please raise your hand. Our ushers would be more than happy to provide you an offering envelope. Please fill that out in its entirety to help accounting and you will receive a tax donation letter. Or you can give anonymously. It's all good, whatever you want to do. Matthew chapter 6. How many know God is a good caregiver? Amen. Amen. He knows how to take care of his children. Yes. And he gives us principles to abide by. I like how Jesus said this. He said, therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life. We talked about Thursday night that thoughts are going to try to hit your mind. But those thoughts aren't your thoughts. So you don't have to take any thought and ponder that thought and be consumed in that thought and allow worry and fear to consume your thought life. You can take that thought and cast it down. So when the thoughts come and they say, we don't have enough, you say, that's not my thought. That's a thought, somebody else's thought, that's not my thought. So what do you do with that thought? Ponder it, think on it. Worry about it. Be concerned. Let it keep you up all night. Let it keep you up all day. No, you cast it down. You take every thought and you, you bring it into submission, into the obedience of God's word. And if it doesn't line up with God's word, you cast it down. You go, that's not my thought. You respond to your thoughts with words. You don't think more thoughts to get rid of bad thoughts. When a bad thought hits you in the head, you respond with your words. And you say, that's not my thought. That's not, that's not the promises of God. Word of God says, take no thought for what shall you eat or what shall you drink or for your body, what you shall put on. These are needs. He says in verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So when the thought comes in, we're not going to have enough. Your response is, that's not my thought. We will have more than enough because we seek first the kingdom of God. You say, I'm a giver. I'm a tither. I'm protected. I'm provided for. Amen. God is, is preserving you, protecting you, and prospering you because of a covenant that he made with your great, 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 granddaddy, Abraham. I love when I say stuff and then I get everyone's attention. I'm like, they're back. Sometimes you just got to say great like 12 times. And then people are like, what's Dave doing up there? <laughs> hey, I'm here. Sometimes I, I get your attention back. The covenant that God established with Abraham is the covenant that you can take full advantage of. 
And it's not because of you. It's not because of what you've done. It's not because of who and how great you are. You could make a mistake and still prosper. The devil will tell you, you messed up, so now you're going to suffer. Not in this covenant. In this covenant, when you repent, the blood of Jesus washes you, and you stand back before God, pure, blameless, spotless, amen, as a child that he desires to bless. Stupid devil. He tries to come in with these thoughts of condemnation, and people are like, well, I'm going to have to struggle and suffer now because I, I made a dumb mistake. No, get back under the blood. Just repent. Say, I plead the blood over myself. That was dumb. Shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have made that decision. Shouldn't have went down that road. Shouldn't have done that thing. But thank God that he is faithful and he's just to forgive me and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. So you confess your sins. That puts you right back in, in perfect standing with God. Right back in covenant. Because the covenant wasn't based upon you. It was based upon Jesus. And Jesus will never make a mistake. Jesus will never mess up. But he is good to his word. And he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. So that's what we do. When we take care of the church, when we take care of our pastor, we're seeking first the kingdom of God. We're putting the kingdom of God first, saying, I'm going to make sure that this is taken care of. And then all the other stuff that I need is provided for. Because it's a principle. And it works every time. Amen? God, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give into your work. We thank you, Father, that as we give, Lord, men are looking to give to us in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. We thank you, Father, that there is favor, goodness, blessing, mercy following us every moment of every day. And, God, we thank you, Lord, as we give into this work that we can reap a hundredfold return in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning and happy fall, officially, the first day of fall. I know it's going to be 100 degrees later, but it was actually nice and cool this morning. Yes, yes, it's starting to feel fall-ish for Phoenix, but happy first day of fall. This is probably one of my, not probably, it is my favorite time of year. Um, but God is so good. I'm going to take up the tithes and offerings, so if you need an envelope for that, please raise your hands. Our ushers will get you an envelope for your tithes and offerings. If you need to give online or text to give, you can do that as well. And if you want to um, put some money into that special offering for building expenses and the rent, I would probably just put it as building fund. That way we know that if it's taken up today, we're going to put it towards the, the, the building expenses and the rent. Um, I'm just going to read a scripture here real quick. Proverbs 11:24. There is the one who generously scatters abroad and yet increases all the more. There's a, there's a concept, there's divine prosperity in being generous and scattering abroad, yes? And there is the one who withholds what is justly due. Well, what is justly due? Your tithes and offerings. You can't withhold your tithes and offerings because if you wi withhold what is justly due, it results only in want and poverty. We have to make sure that we are taking care of our church. We're taking care of our pastor. And that's what happens if you generously scatter abroad and you give to the local church. You bring your tithes and you just believe God and have faith for those offerings. And the Lord will make sure that you are blessed abundantly. And so you're not in want or poverty because you're withholding what is justly due. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, for your love. We thank you, Father God, for divine prosperity. And for the ability, Father God, to prosper your way, the right way, Father God, by being a blessing in our local church, by being a blessing to our pastor and those. And we just give you glory. We honor you, Father God. We thank you for, the pre for your presence. We thank you for the mighty one, the Holy Ghost the one that gives us revelation and insight, the one that helps us overcome. 
Father God, in Jesus' name, the one that is tasked with, is employed in causing your promises to come to pass in our lives. We just give you glory, praise, and honor, Father God, for the precious blood of Jesus. And we just uh, plead the blood of Jesus over this whole congregation. And we thank you, Father God, that we are washed, we are cleansed, we are worthy to be in your presence. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God is so good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be God forevermore. We can be seated if you don't mind, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Let me read this portion of Scripture to you, uh, if I can. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5, verse 21, is a scripture that most of us should be very familiar with. But it says, For uh, he has made him, that is Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we, the body of Christ, might be made the righteousness of God in him. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. In other words, because there was no fault found in him and because he was right before God at all times, amen, he took your place, amen, so that you could be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. That means that you are not condemned for past mistakes. Even if you left your house this morning and made a mistake, the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. If you repent, right? <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Uh, I think uh, a lot of times we view ourselves through our mistakes, through our weaknesses, and not through the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Boy, that is so important that we change the way we think and we view life and the way we view ourselves. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Let me give you another scripture, if I could, along that same line. I was just sharing this with Debbie, or we were talking about it earlier today. Uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Well, let me go back over here then. Thank you, Father. Are you still with me? Let's believe God together today, amen? And, and let's, let's uh, believe God that uh, we're going to leave here and we're not going to be the same. Blessed amen. be God forevermore. The, the things that have been troubling us, the bills, uh, the attacks on our body, are all going to be a thing of the past, amen? amen. Our mind is going to be clear without fog, without trouble, Amen. We're going to think right. We're going to believe right. And we're going to tap into whatever God has for us. In the name of Jesus, glory be to God. Hallelujah. In, uh, in again, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says this. Um, in verse 17, it says this. Now, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? It, it, it holds the truth, the wonderful truth, of a person, that is you, uh, looking into the scriptures and seeing yourself. Amen? Looking into a glass is the idea of looking into a mirror. You're seeing yourself, and as you're seeing yourself in the scriptures, you're being changed from glory to glory. Amen? Isn't God good? Yes. So it stands to reason that by renewing your mind, you're not seeing yourself as a weak, frail individual. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You see yourself as Christ sees you, as God sees you. Amen? Because you're being changed into his image. Every day, every time you get into the scriptures, there's a change taking place. Now, the natural man cannot detect what God is doing inside of you and through you. Amen. But in your heart, you can detect it. You realize 
I'm changing little bit by little bit. Amen? Isn't God good? So today I want to teach on how to live right before God. Amen? Say amen. Amen. Uh, A little bit of participation would help. (laughs) Amen. Amen. So that I realize that you're getting it. Amen? (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we want to talk about obtaining righteousness by believing. It's that easy. Amen. Obtaining righteousness by believing. Did you hear what I said? Amen. You can be right before God simply by believing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, so the word righteousness um, carries the idea of of, uh, living in right standing before God and is linked to the word believing uh, which cancels the instructions of the Mosaic Law. The Mosaic Law was required to fulfill, to be fulfilled in order to obtain righteousness or to be right in right standing before God. So in the Old Testament, we already understand that, don't we? That the Mosaic Law was required. In other words, you had to do the law in order to be counted righteous or to be in right standing with God. Why is that so important? Because everything that comes to you pertaining to every promise that God has ever made the believer comes through righteousness. Amen. Amen. Now, if we have time, I don't know if we have time today, but I'm going to go through a host of scriptures that talk about all the benefits and blessings that come through God's viewing you in right standing with him. But don't forget that Jesus died, took your place, so that you might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That simply means that if you choose to live for God to the best of your ability, amen, minus your mistakes, you can still receive the promises of God. Because understand, you are constantly changing through the word. That wasn't, given, that, that wasn't given to you in the Old Testament like it is today. Amen? Amen. So we want to understand that. And as we get into some of these scriptures, I, I was blown away, and hopefully you will be too. Glory be to God. Amen. Because it brings such relief. Amen? Uh, because we are so task-oriented, and a lot of times we don't feel like we're good enough. We don't feel like we're doing enough. Amen. Amen. Right? We feel like I messed up. And so you fall into shame, condemnation. Amen. Amen. And those things hinder the promises of God in your life because it's not faith. Amen. Amen. So, number one, what is your faith in? Your faith is in the finished work of the cross. Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, amen, which includes the shedding of his blood for your sins, which includes the shedding of his blood to make you right before him. He gave up his life. He took your place so that when God sees you, he sees you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen? Innocent. Amen. Amen. And if you make a mistake, you repent, and the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Amen. 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 So we're going to be discussing some of these things hopefully today. Uh, And I'm hoping to get through this today, but I doubt I will. (laughs) God is so good. (laughs) Thank you, Lord Jesus. Did I tell you that the Greek word... Uh, righteousness actually means to possess a right witness uh, and a course and of course the idea is to possess a right witness before God amen so in other words when God sees you he sees you standing right before him or it, having a right having right behavior right actions amen uh, before him look at Romans chapter 10 verse 4 it says this for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that, what, believes. Amen? So, (laughs) glory be to God. For Jesus, the one that died for you, 
It took your place. Amen? Amen. For Christ is the end of the law. In other words, the law has just been canceled, or the application of the law has been canceled. The law hasn't been canceled, but the way it was applied in the Old Testament has changed. I call it canceled. Amen? God is so good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Father God, to everyone that believes. Amen? Amen? This transfer, this transfers the ability of obtaining righteousness to believing in the finished work of the cross, which includes the blood atonement, which is the blood of Jesus Christ. Because the word believing is a verb, it produces an influential force that supernaturally motivates the believer to act out of inward convictions. That is, those in the state of believing will act out of inward convictions. Amen. Their actions will be motivated by the convictions, persuasions, assurances of their heart. Amen. I know that I'm healed because the scripture says, by his stripes I am healed. Amen. Amen. So faith, that motivating force in you, says, I am healed. Amen. When faith backs up your words, God moves. Amen. The Spirit of God moves. And healing begins to occur sometimes quickly, sometimes through a process of time. Amen. Amen? Amen? It's important that we understand that because you need to understand it's not necessarily you. It's your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The more you are in the Word, amen, amen, it produces a thing called believing. This believing is an inward conviction, an inward persuasion that moves you to speak, to act. Amen. amen. I remember one time when I was really sick, I was trying to walk down my stairs because I said, I am healed. And a healed man ought to be up walking around. But I was sick as a dog. Amen? And I'm trying to walk down, and I passed out and fell to the ground on the steps. I, ended, I woke up. I was on the bottom of the steps. And I said, I got up, and I go, thank God I'm healed. Walked up, fell down again. And what was I doing? I wasn't doing it because I wanted to do it. Something inside of me was motivating me. Amen? Amen. And, I kept, and, and, and through the whole process of time, I kept saying, by his stripes, I'm healed. I was so convinced I was healed, yes. supernaturally, that, that my thought life wouldn't accept the fact that I was terribly sick. Yes. Amen? Amen? And then all of a sudden, the healing power of God kicked in. Amen. Are you here? What caused that? Believing. When God seen that, when the Holy Ghost recognized that faith, amen, amen. the healing power of God began to work. When Jesus recognized the faith of the man that was put through the roof, remember that man that was lame and they put him through the roof? And Jesus said, and Jesus said, uh, said to him, uh, Man, your sins are forgiven. Pick up your bed and walk. Your sins are forgiven. And the man came to be healed. Uh, Jesus, the scripture says, and Jesus saw their faith. What did he see? He seen their faith. So God sees your faith. Amen. Amen. Are you all here? Amen. And then Jesus said, your sins have been forgiven. Pick up your bed and walk. What did the man do? He picked up his bed and walked. And everybody began to rejoice and praise God for it. God is so good. Amen? Uh, but what was that? What caused Jesus to say that? What put this man in a perfect place for God to move in his life? Because he was in right standing with God. It, the sins didn't stop him. Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. What did Jesus act on? Faith. Amen? Say this with me. From, on, from now on, from now on 
I'm maintaining my faith. I'm maintaining my faith. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I'm say this again. I'm tired of being kicked around. I'm tired of being kicked around. I'm tired of giving in. I'm tired of giving in. Of lending my tongue. Of lending my tongue. To my flesh. To my flesh. I'm tired of frustration. I'm tired of frustration. I'm tired of all this. I'm tired of all this. From now on. From now on. I'm living by faith. I'm living by the promises of God's word. I'm living by the promises of God's word. Not what I'm seeing. Not what I'm, seeing, not what I'm feeling. Not what I'm, feeling, not what I'm experiencing. Not what I'm Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory Thank you, God. Lord Jesus. You, you have to be outspoken. You have to let your faith speak, people. Yes. Amen. Amen. You have, did you hear what I said? You have to let the convictions of your heart speak, not, not your feelings. Amen? Faith is of the heart. It's not of the head. It's not of the emotions. Those things will mess you up. Those things can bring frustration. They can bring doubt. Are you all here? They can mess you up, right? You can make a lot of mistakes. Amen? Well, I'm going to leave it there because there's a lot to cover here. And like I said, I'm on, I haven't even got through page one yet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father God. <laughs> Thank you, Father God. Believing is the Greek word pistuo, and it comes from pistis, which is translated faith in the scriptures. Pistis means to be uh, convinced. It's an inward conviction, right? It means to be convinced. It's an inner conviction or persuasion that supernaturally motivates the believer or supernaturally moves the believer. Amen. Amen. Did you hear me? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples in uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 22, have faith in God. Have this inward persuasion, this inward conviction. Amen. 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 And then he said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, amen, amen, pick thyself up and throw yourself in the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believes those things which he saith, they shall come to pass. Amen. 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 Now, notice the language there, but believes. Amen. amen. It's believing what you say amen. concerning the promises of God. Right. Amen. Amen. These words need to be motivated by faith. Right. Now, uh, now, let me say this. I, 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 hope, I hope everybody understands what I'm saying. But you're not a parakeet. Nope. Amen. Amen. Did you hear me? <laughs> you don't mimic people because you hear what they say. Right. Right. Well, Pastor said, I'm healed by his stripes. But if there's no faith behind it, it ain't going to help you much. It's Amen. good to say it, I, I suppose. I mean, eventually you keep saying it, you might fall into faith. But, I mean, isn't it better that faith motivates this word? Yes. By his stripes, I'm healed. Yes. By his stripes, I yes. think clearly. Amen. By his stripes, I'm not a victim. Yes. By his stripes, I'm not a failure. That's right. Amen. How do you see yourself? Look into the Word of God. Stop seeing yourself through your circumstances and through the conditions of your life. Start seeing yourself through the Word of God. If you want your life to change, and if you want things to, to, to begin to develop properly, start seeing yourself through the Word of God. It's what the Word says you are, not who you say you are, not what your neighbor says you are, not what the doctor says you are, not what the tax man says you are. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody, help me out. Boy, have you ever been within a family member and they're like, they're like mad at you or something? Look, I, I said I was sorry. I'm under the blood of Jesus now. I plead the blood of Jesus over my mistakes. So if you got an issue, it's yours, not mine. <laughs> right? The way you see me isn't changing the way God sees me. Right. Amen. I'm under the blood. Amen. Are you all here? Amen. Learn how to live in the word of God through the assistance of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. 
Because we want change. Amen. Amen. What's holding up your prosperity? You can't help but think the way you think. Yes, you can. If you just renew yourself to the Word of God. Renew your mind to the Word of God. Amen? You can bring about change. But you got to take it serious. Amen? You can't just get in the Word once a week. Amen? Amen. Are you all here? You can't just get in the Word once a day. Stay in the Word. Amen. Amen. I've told you, how many times have I told you to get some scriptures and put them down on on a card or something and carry them around with you? So that every time you start thinking like a nut, you unnut yourself by going through the scriptures. (laughs) I I, I don't know if that's correct English, but... (laughs) But, I mean, something's got to change here, right? God is so good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be God forevermore. Thank you, Father God. Did I tell you that the Greek word pistuo comes from the Greek word pistis, which is translated faith? I did tell you that, right? Uh, 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 So pistuo, it's a verb which is believing. So that means... uh, Believing means you're acting on something out of the convictions of your heart, out of faith, out of believing, right? And and God God is so good. Um, Thank you, Father God. (laughs) Thank you, Father God. Let's go to let's go to first John chapter uh, one, verses seven through nine. God is so good, isn't he? Uh, now this is, if 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 we were going to put things in a certain uh, list, amen. This is the first one. This is the first step in learning how to live right before God, amen. Or uh, should I say, in learning how to become empowered to live right before God, amen. Uh, uh, so First uh, John chapter one verses seven through nine says. Uh, But if we walk in the light, which is in the revelation of God's word, uh, as he is in the light, or the revealed will of God, the light, right? So if you go into a dark room, amen, and you can't see, like every morning when, uh, when we come in here, it's really dark. So we have to get a little flashlight on our phones, you know, and put the light on our phones so we can see, amen. Uh, because I've come here and not had my phone and, and you know, ran into things, <laughs> right? Because I couldn't see, right? Amen? But God is in the light. If you're going to walk with God, you're going to walk in revealed knowledge, Amen. revealed truth, amen? And the revealed will of God for your life, amen? Amen. Uh, but if we walk in the light, and I always say that we must <laughs> walk in the light, uh, as he is in the light, talking about God the Father, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us of all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. Verse 8. If we say we have, not, we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, or when we confess our sins, is the way I would read it, because that's the way I am, and I'm hoping that's the way you are. When you make a mistake, it's like, oops, sorry, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful. He is reliable. He is dependable. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. He is faithful. Amen? Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. But you have to you have to adopt a life of repentance. Amen? Amen. Are you all here? Amen. Everybody should adopt a life of repentance. 
How many times have you been with somebody that you really love, but you say something dumb? <laughs> and they, they, they're bothered by it. Amen? Amen? Did you know you should apologize? Amen. Amen? Because, you know, if you don't apologize, did you know, you know, by doing dumb things, you, you know, you, you, you could strain that relationship Amen. or even destroy that relationship. Did you know that? Well, that applies to God, too. Amen. Live a life of repentance because you will make mistakes. Amen. Amen. So don't be so hard on yourself, but just learn to get under the blood. Yes. Learn to yes. repent. Amen. And in a sincere effort. I mean, this isn't a license to act like a dodo bird. Right? You know, right? It's sincere. Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. We all have moments, have had moments of weaknesses and failures. However, in order to put those things behind us, we must adopt a lifestyle of repentance. For we have been called into a life of fellowship with God. And with each other. The scripture says that God is in the light. And that if we, again I say we must, walk in the light. We have fellowship with one another. This means or includes uh, that we have fellowship with God, the Father. And along with that, we have fellowship with our family members. We have fellowship with our friends. We have fellowship with church members. Amen. We have fellowship with people that are saved and not saved. Uh, and I use that term, fellowship with people that are not saved, loosely. Because I simply just mean we, 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 we're going to be around people that are not saved. But we still got to act like Christians. Amen. Uh, so uh, God is so good. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Thus we understand, and this is important, that broken fellowship will and can destroy or strain our relationships. You can't just live in mistakes and have everybody support you all the time. Why? Well, I think the answer is, Right, but you don't have to live there when you sincerely repent. Amen. Right? Amen. Right? Yes. Are you all here? Amen. I've made mistakes, and people go, "Well, yeah, it's because you made a mistake." No, it's not. I repented. What you're trying to do is cause me to condemn myself, mm -hmm. but I've repented. And I've pled the blood of Jesus over my life. And I purpose not to behave like that again. Amen. 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 A moment of weakness. Amen. Amen. A mistake. I don't care what you call it. I repented. Amen. Amen. I don't care what anyone calls it. If you repent, you've repented. Amen. And the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. Now, don't go breaking the law. Because civil law don't work that way. Yeah. Are you all here? I don't, why should I throw these little things in here like this? Because I don't want anybody to misunderstand me. Amen. Isn't God good? But what works that way? Our Heavenly Father works that way. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord be to God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. The word fellowship means partnership, participation, being in union with each other. The ability to communicate effectively means intimacy. Amen? Amen. By living a life of sincere repentance, the blood of Jesus Christ continuously cleanses us of all unrighteousness, keeping us in fellowship with God the Father, and with one another. Amen. There is no reason for our relationships to be strained. 
with each other. Amen? Amen. Are you all here? Yes. Now, this is an added clause. Amen? Amen? Amen. Uh, so keep this in mind. True repentance is based on sincerity. Yes. Amen? Can we repeat that? True repentance is based on sincerity. Amen. That's important, amen, uh, which is a quality of being free from pretense or deceit. Amen. amen. That's important. Amen. It means, amen. it means that you behave mm -hmm. and you act the way you believe. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So if you believe you repented, then the whole concept of repenting is going down a different path. Right. Don't go down the path that was wrong. Go down a, yes. the right path, right? right. So the idea, if I believe the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed me of all unrighteousness, if I believe that God has washed me from all unrighteousness, cleansed me by the precious blood of Jesus, I will go down a different path. I'm certainly not going to go down the same path, which got me to where I was then. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, glory be to God. <laughs> Thank you, Father God. Well, I'll, let's move on from that. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. And, and I, I'm just going to go through. There's a lot in here. I'm not going to cover it all. Amen. Uh, a lot of times when I, when I, when I start studying, I, I lose track of time. And I'll, I'll spend days, like, you know, 12 hours a day working on something. Amen. Researching everything, going, going through multiple translations, going through the Greek or the Hebrew, you know, making sure that, that I can get as close as I can to what God is trying to tell us. Amen. Amen. And just believe, believe in God by faith that, we're able, that uh, God will give us, amen, what we need. In Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, it says this. There, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. So condemnation is a guilty verdict. Yes. Amen. It first appears in your spirit or in your heart. It's when you feel bad because you did something or said something. Amen. Yes. And, and, and that usually comes when you've taken time to Develop your spirit in the Word of God. Amen. The more you develop in the Word of God, the do's, what people call the do's and don'ts of the Word, the more you develop in that, the more your conscience will be active Amen. in that area. Right? Uh, so, uh, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give you glory and praise, Father, in Jesus' name. So, uh, that's the idea of condemnation. It first appears in your heart. And then, if you don't repent, repent well, the outcome of your life won't be good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Because condemned actually means a guilty verdict. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Okay. So it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The Greek word for walk, amen, who walk after the flesh and not after the spirit. Remember that phrase or term? Uh, the Greek word for walk here is, is a verb, is the verb peri parejo. And it comes from a Greek preposition meaning peri, which, or, which is peri, and it means all over, all around, mm -hmm. amen. And then it's joined to another Greek word, patejo. And that means a path or a, a, a well-traveled road. Right. Amen. It's the idea of uh, trampling a road uh, underfoot. It's like, you know, have you ever seen like those, those paths that people make? Either it's in their yard or out in, uh, out in the forest or wherever it may be. But, but you can tell that people have been walking on it because it's well trotted on, amen. well beaten down. Amen. So a well-beaten path, or this Greek word peripadejo, means that people have become accustomed to walking a certain path or going down a certain road. Amen? Amen. 
it's the idea of people continuing to, 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 to walk in the Spirit. Amen? Amen? Or to walk out of the dictates of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. It's, but there's also another thing here that talks about, you know, the dictates of the flesh, who walk not after the Spirit, but after the flesh. So there's two paths here. Uh, one is someone that keeps living in sin after the flesh. The word flesh is a word that's always has come to come to mean the sin nature, the human nature. But the actual word is is rooted in the physical body. It's the idea of the appetites, longings, and needs of the physical body. This is where temptation comes. Amen. Amen. It affects the body. Like somebody wants to eat a cookie. Did I tell you I, I used to love cookies? I'd have at least 10 cookies a day, if not more. I love cookies. I would sit there with a glass of milk, cookie, cookie, cookie. I'm happy. But I started to swell up like a well or something over a period of time. So the Lord said to me one time I was driving down the road, he said to me, uh, if you want to live long enough to see the fruit of your labor, you're going to have to change some things. One of the things he told me to change was the way I was eating. Amen. Okay, well, that, I, I don't know why I went that far, but see, that's, a, th th that's an inclination of my body. My body craved. Amen. Amen. This is where lust for a cookie Amen. Yeah. Amen. for certain bad behaviors Amen? That gets you in trouble? Mm -hmm. That's where that comes from. What is it appealing to? It is appealing to the inclinations of your flesh uh, uh, that, were, that, that activates the sin nature in you. Mm -hmm. Amen? That is for those that walk after the flesh. But you are not of those that walk after the flesh. Amen? Amen. You are of those that walk after the Spirit. Amen? Amen? So that means that your lifestyle is not uh, is not living in the flesh. Your lifestyle is living in the spirit. So if you make a mistake, that doesn't disqualify you from the promises of God. Amen. Are you all here? Because you're not continuously purposing, wanting to, refusing to obey God. Amen? Amen. You, some, from time to time, people will experience weaknesses. Amen? Repent of those weaknesses. Repent of those weaknesses and don't go back there. Are you all here? Yes. Because if you do, you're becoming more and more used to developing a lifestyle that will get you into trouble and cause you problems. In fact, there, there's mistakes that you made. Amen. Like I've made mistakes in my past. I ended up in prison. Now God forgave me for my mistakes. But the law didn't. Amen? Now, God protected me while I was there, took care of me while I was there, Amen. developed me while I was there, changed my whole life while I was there. Amen? Amen. But the consequences of breaking the law, so there's consequences to behavior that you want to avoid by walking in the Spirit, right? Amen. I'm going on too much about this. Uh, but, but, uh, but it's important for us to understand that this portion of scripture is not talking about because you made a mistake. It's talking about developing a life of mistakes or developing a life of walking after the Spirit or walking after the dictates of the Spirit. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Are you all here? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Who's calling me? My daughter's calling me. Sorry, honey, I can't answer the phone right now. She must want a cookie or something on the way home. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory be to God. Does she think I'm supposed to be done now? I don't know. Hallelujah, glory be to God. <laughs> okay, seems I made a mess of that. Let's go on to another scripture, amen? Okay, I'm bypassing a bunch of stuff now. So let's go to Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. 
Now, I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible, amen? And it says, And Abram, that's before he became Abraham, amen? Uh, believed in, affirmed, trusted in, relied on, remained steadfast to the Lord. And he counted it, credited it to him as righteousness, doing right in regard to God and man. Amen? So notice how the word believe is translated in the Amplified as the words affirmed, trusted in, relied on, and remained steadfast to. Now that is helpful to us. Amen? Because that kind of gives us an idea of how faith is so determined. It said he remains steadfast. Amen. When you remain steadfast, it means you're not willing to abandon your direction. Right. You're steadfast. You're focused. You're locked in. Amen. Amen. <laughs> when you're trusting in someone, are you all here? Like my parents, I could trust them. Amen. Amen. So if I was hungry, I always knew there was food in the refrigerator. It might just be beans and potatoes, but there was food there. Bologna, mac and cheese. That's when I was real young, right? Because that's when I really didn't have anything and couldn't fend for myself. Amen. Amen. But there was always something there to eat. I just, I just naturally knew that. Did you hear what I said? Amen. I naturally knew that. I knew that I knew that I knew that there was provision in that, those cabinets or in the refrigerator. Peanut butter, jelly, whatever. It's there. I know Amen. it's there. Amen? I don't have to uh, be hungry. If I wasn't hungry, it was because I wanted to be hungry, which... For a Mexican, that's not the way it works. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> oh, oh, you know that. <laughs> so I, I was well fed. You know, in my mind, I, that was good. Amen. See, when you trust in God, you know provision is there. Amen. You just know. Amen. He, it's there. You don't doubt it. Amen. Now, in the natural, you would think, I wonder if my parents bought some, you know, some bonbons or something, some Twinkies or something. I, usually, I couldn't find that in there. But now, with God, there was plenty of Twinkies, but it wasn't helping me. Amen. So... That's where I had to learn discipline. <laughs> That's a different story altogether. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay. Notice how the, or we said that, didn't we? Um, okay. Notice how the word believing is translated in, in the Amplified as affirmed, trusted, and relied on, uh, remained steadfast to, this is an added perspective teaching us how faith can be applied or is to be applied. Amen. Uh, James chapter, chapter 2 verse 23 says this, And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. The realization that escapes many is that by staying in faith and believing, uh, God is able to count our acts and statements of faith as righteousness. Amen? Amen. It's these acts motivated by faith that put you in right standing with God. Amen? It's not through reading your Bible and saying, well, the Bible says, you know, uh, 
not to be rude, but I can't help but being rude. When the Bible says, be kind one to another. Now, you can look at that and try to do that in the natural, right? And you might have some success. But you really will have success when your kindness is motivated by faith. Because you have the assisting power of the Holy Ghost backing you up, produced by your faith. Amen? So, technically, now I say technically, it's not you. However, God is working through you. Amen. Amen? So that's the importance of faith. Amen? That's the importance of believing. You want to be right before God? Get in the scripture and let faith come. Amen? Amen? Get in the scripture and start acting on what you believe. Let what you believe motivate you. And quit sitting on the couch and wondering when God's going to move. Amen. I see that one over real good. Just That was just a little helpful stuff you might need. Amen? Because if you're just sitting and wondering when God's going to move, Lord, when are you going to answer my prayers? Well, when you start getting in the Word and then following the Holy Ghost and be led by the Holy Ghost so that your prayers can be answered. In most cases, it's not all-inclusive, Amen? Uh, but we understand what we're saying. See, lear learning to live by faith takes you into a different area. Amen? Um, back when I was young, a young Christian, there was a lot of emphasis on miracles. Amen? And, and that, it, that is good. We want miracles. Amen? We need more of them. Amen? And we experience them from time to time. But that's just it. It's from time to time. You want to get miracles in your life. You're going to have to start acting on your faith. Amen. Amen. If you notice that the majority of people that Jesus healed all came to him in faith. Amen. Amen. There was those times where masses amounts of people were being healed under an anointing. And a man at the pool of Bethesda was definitely healed by an anointing. But there was also the, the, the major portions of scripture when people approached Jesus, it was always by faith. Amen? Amen. I mean, the Syrophoenician woman, you know, just kept yelling at Jesus, you know, and, you know, Son of David, have mercy on me. What was his response? Well, he, he said, you know, it's not right for me to give the children's bread to, to dogs. Most of us would be offended by that term. Amen. But she said, you're right, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, but even the dogs eat from their master's table. And Jesus like looked at her and said, Woman, you have great faith. Be it unto you even as you will. Amen. So it was her faith that prompted God to move in her life. Amen. Amen. So if you're going to wait around for a miracle all the time, you might be waiting for a little while. But if you want to see things moving in your life more, you have to master faith. Amen. Amen? So there's a combination of miracles that we're very excited about. But let's not forget about faith. Amen? Amen? Faith puts you in right standing with God. Amen? So we ask ourselves, how did Abraham enter into an agreement with God? When Abraham broke covenant with God, it was by faith. And Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So the realization that escapes many is that by standing in faith and believing God, he is able to count our acts and statements of faith as righteousness. Believing in the promises and commandments of God to live morally, and kindly is counted as being right before God and is seen as being the friend of God. Amen? Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Believing for prosperity, for good health, and if need be, for physical healing or physical health, right? Amen. All these things 
when we fall into a state of believing, is counted as being right before God. Amen? It's believing. Amen? If there's a problem with God moving in your life, work on your believing. Amen? Are you all here? Because believing is thoroughly convinced. There is no doubt in believing. Amen. Amen. There's no frustration in believing. There's no anger in believing. Why? Because faith works by love. Amen. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. Faith works by love. Faith works by love. Amen. Faith travels through love. Love is kind to one another. Amen. Right? Amen. So Amen. if you are a love walker, yes. you're also a faith walker. Amen. Amen. The two are merged together to produce prosperity in your life. Amen. 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 Isn't God good? It's time that we took charge of our lives in regard to the promises of God. We have a responsibility. Amen? Amen. To, to acknowledge that faith is needed. Amen. Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Peripatecho. There's that Greek word again. That well-beaten path. I'm so familiar with the life of faith, with the walk of faith, that I, I systematically just start doing that. When the world attacks me, in the name of Jesus, by his stripes I'm healed. Amen. When, when bills come due, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God, that this too will be taken care of. Are, are you all here? Amen. Uh, why? Because, because my faith, your faith, speaks out the promises of God. And when your faith is in, when your words are empowered by faith, God begins to move in your life. Yes. What has been the problem then is that we doubt everything we say. We know what the word says, so we want to say the word, but really there's a part of us that's not sure. Amen? I, me I remember when, I, when, 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 uh, uh, when the pa my pastor would ask me, come on up and pray for these people that, that are sick. Amen? And, I, and, I, and I'd go, I would think in my mind, oh no, what about if they don't get healed? So I'd be praying for him. In the name of Jesus, you know, you are healed. I was saying all the right things. But that nagging thing, I hope to get healed. I hope to get healed. Faith doesn't, doesn't think like that. Faith knows. Amen? Faith knows. Bible hope is not human hope. Bible hope is an expectation. Amen? Amen? So when you lay hands on the sick, you should expect them to be healed. Amen? Amen. Well, anyways, I, I, I asked the Lord, Lord, these people don't look healed to me. You know, I've been praying and praying and praying. And, in the, uh, you know, and this, went, it, I mean, I didn't get an answer right away, right? But, but uh, after a period of time, a small period of time, I suppose, uh, the Lord said to me, the Lord said to me, uh, you're not in faith. You don't believe. And I said, I sure do. I sure do. And then he said, well, why do you keep saying to me, I sure hope they get healed. Mm. When you're asking God to pay your bills, do you say, <laughs> right? Or do you start thinking in your own mind, how am I going to get this paid? And you start, you know, coming up with ideas of, well, I can call so-and-so, I can call so-and-so, or I can call so-and-so. I can sell this, I can, I can pay this and not this. Are, are you all here? Instead of just resting and just saying, okay, Lord, this is in your hands. 
you take care of it. Amen. What are you doing? Well, you're casting your cares upon the Lord, but you're doing it by faith. Yes. Amen. Amen. You're doing it by faith. You need God to move in your life. But if you have that apprehension in you, the devil can use that to deny you access to the promises. Amen? Don't overthink things. Pray it out and then walk it out. Amen? Amen. God is so good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Father God. By looking at James 22-23, what is the biblical... Uh, the question is, what is the biblical view of friends in Scripture and how loosely is that word thrown around in today's culture? Everybody's a friend these days. Amen? Have you noticed that, or am I the only one? It's like you look at a perfect stranger and, hey, friend, how you doing? <laughs> well, that's nice. I mean, I don't really see anything wrong with it. But don't get confused. When the Bible calls you a friend, there's a reason for it. Amen? Amen. Uh, let me, let me, uh, uh, hallelujah, glory be to God. The, 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 the word friend is the Greek word uh, phleos. It comes from phleo. Amen? Uh, which is a word translated love. Uh, or one of the words translated love. Uh, here it means an associate. Being in collaboration with those who feel and see things in the same way you do. They have these individuals have fallen into a divine connection with God the Father. So you can see that the word friend here is specific. It's not just somebody you say hi to once in a while. Amen. It's somebody that that you work with, somebody that sees the way you see things, someone talks your language, amen. amen. Have you ever if you like my wife, you know, she'll answer my questions or answer me before I even it comes out of my mouth. She, she thinks the way I think. She feels the way I feel. Are, are you all here? Uh, uh, there's people like that in your life. They're more likely to be fall into this category of friends. Amen? 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 A friend is not, is not, okay, I like you no matter what you do. That's not friends. There's no collaboration there. Amen. Right? Are you all here? Now, I'm talking about from a biblical standpoint, right? Not from a natural standpoint. There's, there's, there's a big difference. Uh, we need to move more towards <laughs> those three girls back there are on fire. Not in a bad way. No. Did I just embarrass them? I need to. <laughs> I uh, I just was given a rock. It's the most beautiful rock you've ever seen. Amen. It's got these little cactuses on it. I'm going to take it home. Put it in my garden with the rest of my rocks. But never mind. You guys don't understand rocks, do you? <laughs> they're, they're my wife really loves rocks. So I love rocks. You love rocks too? I'm sure she'll sell you one. They're really <laughs> nice. Anyways, let me get back to the scripture before I get in trouble. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse 17. It says this For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Notice how it, notice the language in this verse. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. The whole idea here is that the application of faith, the application of your faith, reveals righteousness. Amen? Amen. Every time you operate in faith, righteousness or being right before God is being revealed. Amen? Yes. Amen. This is important, people. Yes. Amen? Because it's not that hard to live in righteousness. Right. 
Amen. Amen. You can make a mistake and repent, and the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. I, I can't begin to tell you how many times a day I have to repent. I live with three women. I hope my wife's not listening. <laughs> well, you know, guy, the way a guy thinks is not always the way the women in his house Amen. think. Amen. Amen. So they look at me like, you know. And there, I'm not pastor. It's much easier being pastor. There, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just the son-in-law or I'm just honey. Or, or dad. And I can't begin to tell you the other names they might call me from time to time. <laughs> Just plain, of course, but, but still. <laughs> so, I have to repent a lot. <laughs> because sometimes I say things, you know, uh, that they might see a little bit not correct and so I'm like quit being so sensitive and they're like quit being so mean I'm sorry <laughs> you apologize very quickly yeah. which I'm fine with apologizing glory be to God but now, but now don't do what I do please follow my faith not my mistakes because sometimes I'll poke the bear on purpose. <laughs> that gets me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Amen. So remember, don't be poking the bear and say what well, Pastor said, because it's not a good idea. No. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm getting off message here, ain't I? For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Let me read this out of the Amplified Bible. For in the gospel of for in the gospel of righteousness, which is ascribed, which is which ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith, that arouses to more faith, as it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. So the man who through faith is just and upright. Justified or just is the concept of being proclaimed righteous before, before God. So whenever you read that word justified in the scriptures, it means that God is declaring you or has declared you in right standings with him or has declared you right or righteous. Amen. That's justification. Amen. But notice how this scripture ends. Faith, the man who through faith is just and upright. Amen. So how did he become just and upright? Through faith. Amen. Amen. Through faith shall live and shall live by faith. So the term shall live and live by faith means a constant advancement of faith. Amen? Amen? And I'm not going to read the rest because it's already getting later. But anyways, the whole idea is it's, it's, uh, it's a continuing that, that as, you, as, you, as you're developing in faith and you're acting in faith, amen, it's an ongoing thing. It's just like every day, faith, 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 faith. Amen? That these acts of faith place you in right standing with God. Amen? Amen. Isn't that interesting? So how do you live right before God? Well, start with getting in faith. Amen. Now, there's other things that people can say. Well, following the Holy Ghost. Okay, that's good. Amen? Amen. But you're going to need faith for that. Amen. Amen? Some people will say, well, do the Word of God. Well, that's true, but you're going to need faith for that. Amen. Amen? So there's other things you can throw in there. Amen? But this one here is extremely important because you can avoid condemnation. 
And you got to be able to get past those moments of weakness. Amen? Amen. Because condemnation will not allow you to approach God. Amen. 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 Have you ever made a mistake and felt so bad about it that, well, you didn't want to pick up your Bible that day? You kind of, well, I'll put off prayer for later. What are you doing? Amen. That condemnation is trying to restrict that access to God. But faith, repenting by faith, removes that condemnation and gives you a quick access to God when you are sincere. Amen? Isn't God good? There is no reason... For a believer to fail. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. There is no reason for a believer ever to fail. God has made it impossible for a believer to fail. If the believer will just pay more attention to the word of God. And see how much God loves you. And what the provisions that he's made for you. In order to make you a success. Amen. Amen. And to make you an overcomer. The word that he's given you can bring you health, healing, salvation. It can deliver you from anything that you ever will experience in life. Amen. Amen. God is wanting to deliver you and set you free. Amen. You just make sure that you're walking after the spirit that is the dictates of your heart by the power, by being empowered by the Holy Ghost and not your body, the dictates of your body. Which, which are the flesh, the sin nature. Amen. Amen? Anyway, God is so good. Isn't God good? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I appreciate you guys all. Uh, and uh, maybe next week I'll teach this again. But if I don't, uh, because next week I think we're going to get into the benefits of righteousness. Amen. I'm, I'm going to go through the scriptures. Now that we've learned how to 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 be in right standing with God, how to get there. I want to show you why it's so important to, to live right before God, by faith. Amen? Amen? By faith. That motivating power or force, amen, amen. that moves you, amen? And you don't have to depend on yourself. You depend on God moving through you because of his word. Amen? amen? God can move through you. You don't have to be downtrodden. You don't have to struggle with your thoughts. You don't have to struggle with the way you feel. You don't have to struggle with what you can't have. You just got to believe God and let God move you into the proper position that he wants you in. Amen. Amen. Which will coincide with the desires of your heart. God is so good. Isn't God good? Yes. Father God, we just give you praise, glory, and honor. We just worship you, Father God. We thank you. For your goodness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father, in Jesus' name, uh, let your word, uh, let this word ring out through through our hearts all day so that we might understand how good and how merciful you are, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless all of you. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.